Welcome to lecture 24. Now that we know, as we discussed in the previous class, the strength of soil, always we say shear strength. It cannot have no compression, no tension, and no flexure. Soil can only have shear resistance. To develop a concept of shear, let us go to simple Newton's experiment. I have a block here and you put in a normal force P and now you apply a horizontal force Q. For a given normal force P, as you increase Q, the block will initially resist, it will not move. Once Q reaches Q max, the block will start moving and that is defined as mu, the coefficient of friction is equal to Q max by P. The maximum horizontal stress, again if you want to see it, if I have the block here and there is a certain force and after a force is applied, you apply the horizontal, when under what force will it start moving? That is the maximum Q and based on that you define that. So, at failure, which means the block move, starts moving, the forces are P and Q max. So, the resultant you can say is R and this will be inclined at an angle, let us say phi. So, please remember on the block, again you can also say the shear resistance is mobilized by this force, this is normal force P and this is Q. So, what is this resistance? Q max is equal to the same as in the block on the other side of the interface or the surface of the table. And if the resultant of these two, please look at P and horizontal force Q max, resultant is R. So, can I say that P is equal to R cos phi and Q max is equal to R sin phi. The resultant is inclined at an angle phi with the vertical. So, R cos phi gives me phi and R sin phi gives me Q max. If I now substitute here R sin phi by R cos phi, resultant times sin phi divided by resultant times cos phi, you get tan phi. So, the coefficient of friction is written as tan of a certain angle. So, this is called the friction angle angle of friction or we say friction angle for two surfaces. So, this concept was studied long time by Coulomb. What he said was why not we study movement of soil with respect to another along a given plane surface. So, if I have let us say I take a box, cut it into half. So, I have two boxes resting on each other and you fill it up with soil, you put a normal force and then you apply a horizontal force. So, that you would like to find out what will be the resistance mobilized along the plane A B. So, you have taken a two halves of a box, put one on another because this top is not joined, it can be separate one so that you have that. So, this is called a simple direct shear box. Coulomb was also studying in terms of retaining walls and he said if the soil is moving along a plane, what should be the shear resistance? 
So, this is simulated in a simple box by putting one box here another and trying to shear between the two by providing a horizontal force. So, if I put a force P and a Q, can I not calculate the normal stress is P by area of the box and similarly tau is Q by area of this plane. Let us say this box is about something like 6 centimeters by 6 centimeters. It is a square box. So, when I apply the load, the area is 36 square centimeters. So, whatever force you are applying, divide by the area, you get the normal stress. And if you apply the horizontal force, divide that by area, you get the shear stress. What Coulomb did was tested under different normal stresses. So, if you are doing that, sigma and tau, you apply say P1, which means sigma 1, you will get tau max 1. Then increase, take another sample, increase the stress and find out tau max 2. P3, increase to sigma 3 and tau max 3. Let us say, I start with P sigma 1 is equal to half kilogram per centimeter square or let us say something like 50 kPa. Sigma 2 is 100 kPa and sigma 3 is 200 kPa. I am increasing the vertical stress 50, 100, 200 and then I try to find out how much is the maximum stress. I can plot those three points. This is sigma 1 tau max 1, sigma 2, tau max 2 and sigma 3 and tau max 3. If you join them, you get a straight line. You can fit a straight line to these three and that gives you the maximum strength the soil can carry. And what strength would it be? It has to be shear strength. So, what he said was tau is equal to C plus sigma tan phi. What are the parameters? This is the intercept C and this angle is called C. So, you can say that the equation of the failure surface or the failure envelope we call it. Can the soil take any stress in this region? Above the line, obviously it cannot because this is the maximum Q values you have plotted for various normal stresses. That is why we call it as envelope. So, the soil can only take stresses defined by this equation. If I am fitting a straight line, equation for that straight line is tau is equal to C plus sigma tan phi. Can I say C is the intercept on the y axis? and phi is the slope or tan phi is the slope. What was then called was these are two properties of the soil. So, we say here C is called cohesion and phi is called the angle of friction or as I said earlier or friction angle. Later, I will try to introduce the concept. It is called angle of shear resistance. I would rather like you to take this definition later and use it always. Initially, to understand, you had to start with friction as a concept, but there is more to the shear resistance than friction. There is some energy loss inside during shearing. And so, we call it as angle of shear resistance or shearing resistance. So, please remember, we have to use these two terms, angle of shearing resistance. So, the strength of the soil, the shear strength of the soil is defined by these two parameters. The most interesting thing is, the shear strength is a function of the normal stress. The more normal stress you increase, the shear resistance will increase because it is linearly proportional to the vertical or normal stress. And this is a coefficient tan phi 
gives the slope of the line and this is the initial value. What is the strength when sigma is 0? At the origin, there is no normal stress and so because of that you get cohesion. These are the concepts according to Coulomb. Somewhere in 1776, he tried to give this idea when he was looking at the soil and retaining structures. About 100 years later, Moore started uh, looking into the soil and he gave the Moore circle. We have seen that. So, suppose now I take a cylindrical sample, I apply three different confining stresses. What he said was, you take a sample, maybe any block or whatever it is, first apply horizontal stresses all around, then try to find out how much should be the vertical stress so that the sample will fail. So here I have one sample with sigma 3 1. Let us say sigma 3 1 is 50 kPa. I have confined the sample radially under 50 kPa. In the second case, I am applying equal all round pressure of 100 kilopascals. In the third one, I am applying 150 kilopascals. Then I try to find out how much is the maximum stress you can put in so that the sample will fail. So what Moore did was instead of plotting sigma and tau, he plotted the Moore circles. So if we have a sample which is tested under three different confining stresses, we can plot the same on the Moore plot where we have sigma and tau. First circle at failure would be this, second would be and the third Please remember this is sigma 3 1, sigma 3 2 and sigma 3 3. Three different confining stresses. The failure is occurring at sigma 1 1 f, sigma 1 2 f and sigma 1 3 f. Because if I am testing the soil at different confining stresses, I find that the size of the Mohr circle is increasing because the soil is being confined with a higher stress. If you now draw an envelope to these more circles, you will get another similar line like what we got earlier between tau and sigma. And this is called because you are plotting on a Morse plot and you are combining the Coulomb's original concept, it is called more Coulomb criterion or you can say failure envelope. What you find is when you are looking in a general stress state where you are looking at both horizontal and vertical stresses, I can look at it as a horizontal confining stress and how much stress should I apply to cause it to failure. You may ask where is it applicable. If I now look at different depths as we go deeper, both the vertical stress is increasing and the confining stress is increasing. So the strength of the soil need not be the same at all these places. When I say strength, it is the maximum value of stress. But the criterion tells us that under these conditions, the failure of the soil is defined by exactly the same kind of equation. You have cohesion here, intercept and this angle is phi. So you will say tau is equal to C plus sigma tan phi. This is how you can say more Coulomb criterion can be expressed using more circles. Earlier we were looking at simple shear of two blocks of soil under a given normal stress and we are looking at a predetermined failure sliding along a given plane. But here we are not looking at that kind of failure and we are looking at the state of stress in the ground by applying different lateral confining stresses and finding out how much is the maximum stress you can apply so that the soil, soil sample will fail. So that is what we said, sigma 3 1 50 kPa is the confining stress. 
the sigma 1 1 f is the failure in the maximum stress under this condition. When I increase the confining stress sigma 3 2 to 100 kPa, failure stress is much larger and if I go to 150 kPa as the confining stress, the failure stress can be even much more. If I now plot the confining stress and the vertical stress at failure, you get one sample, second sample, third sample. These are the largest more circles you can plot. The sample will fail under this stress and so we draw an envelope. The soil cannot take any stress beyond this line and so we call it as an envelope. And you get the more Coulomb criterion which is again similar to the previous one. Shear stress or the shear strength is equal to cohesion plus normal stress tan sigma or tan phi, not sigma, I'm sorry, tan phi. This is the same. There is another way more convenient to describe the same using the principal stresses and we'll derive that expression. The overall is the same, but suppose I say I would like to express this in terms of sigma 3 at failure, sigma 1 at failure, this is C and this angle is phi. Please note that the failure envelope is tangent to the Mohr circle. So, if you call that angle as alpha, we need to find out what is that angle alpha. The failure envelope is given by, let us say, A, B, C. So, A, B, C, the line is given by C plus sigma tan phi. Whereas, B, D, the distance is equal to the cohesion in terms C. And this angle with the horizontal is called phi. So, can I say that the angle here is also phi? So, you have here and then this center is given by E. And let us say this is F. Let us look at the triangle A F E. A F E. Can I say that this angle is pi by 2? It is say the envelope, the, I mean failure envelope obviously is tangent to a circle. So, any tangent to the circle will make a 90 degree angle with respect to the radius. This is E F is the radius R and R is equal to sigma 1 minus sigma 3 by 2 as you have seen here and earlier also that is equal to half the diameter that is sigma 1 minus sigma 3. So, you have a right angle triangle and if this angle is ah, phi, how much would be the inside angle? You know the sum of the three angles inside the triangle are equal to 180 that is pi. So, this will be equal to pi by 2 minus phi. So, alpha becomes pi by 2 plus phi. This angle is again 180, you can see straight line and the inside angle is pi by 2 minus phi, this is pi by 2, this is phi. So, it becomes 180 inside the triangle across the point E, pi by 2 minus phi plus pi by 2 plus phi gives me phi. So, you know now the angle the point F makes with respect to the point corresponding to maximum principal stress. We will come back to that little later. If you look at this triangle, can I find out how much is R in terms of the hypotenuse? Can I say that sin phi is equal to R divided by or shall I say EF to start with? divided by A E. I want to know sin phi is equal to the perpendicular divided by the orthogonal. And E F is nothing but the radius R divided by A E. And A E can I say 
is equal to a to d and d to e, a to d plus d to e, a d plus d e. If this distance b d is c, can I say a d is equal to c cot phi? This angle is phi, this b d length is c, so a d will be equal to c cot phi plus d e as we have seen earlier is nothing but average of the two principal stresses. So, now we know a e is equal to c cot phi plus sigma 1 plus sigma 3 by 2 whereas e f where is e f we have written is equal to the radius which is equal to sigma 1 minus sigma 3 by 2. So, if I combine all these we get a very simple expression sin phi is equal to sigma 1 minus sigma 3 by 2 divided by c cot phi plus sigma 1 plus sigma 3 by 2. Please remember we said sin phi is equal to E f by A e, E f is nothing but r, r the radius of the mode circle is equal to sigma 1 minus sigma 3 by 2. A e is sum of two components, A e is equal to A d plus D e, A d is C cot phi and D is equal to sigma 1 plus sigma 3 by 2. Now we can simplify this expression which is if I bring that term sigma 1 minus sigma 3 by 2 is equal to c cot phi plus sigma 1 plus sigma 3 by 2 into sin phi. Can I write it as cot phi is cos by sin. So, this becomes c cos phi plus sigma 1 plus sigma 3 by 2 sin phi. Let us try to bring all the sin terms to one side and the I mean sigma 1 term on to the left take sigma 3 to the right. If I do that let us even multiply. So, this becomes 2 and this cancelling 2 then I have sigma 1. If I bring sigma 1 into sin phi to the left it becomes minus sigma 1 sin phi is equal to 2 c cos phi. I have sigma 3 sin phi and I am getting sigma 3. So, I will have sigma 3 plus sigma 3 sin phi and this you can simplify as sigma 1 into 1 minus sin phi is equal to 2 cos phi plus sigma 3 into 1 plus sin phi and now you can write at failure sigma 1 f is equal to 2 c cos phi plus sigma 3 by divided by 1 minus sin phi plus sigma 3 1 plus sin phi divided by 1 minus sin phi. We can also write it as 2 c cos phi by 1 minus sin phi plus sigma 3 we write it as n phi. n phi is nothing but tan square pi by 4 plus phi by 2. I would like you to do your trigonometry, revise it and show that this is nothing but 1 plus sin phi by 1 minus sin phi. So, you now end up getting a very simple expression for failure in terms of the principal stresses and that is the beauty of the mode circle. So, we say either you can write if I know the stresses on the plane tau is equal to c plus sigma tan phi or if I am looking at principal stresses sigma 1 f is equal to 2 c cos phi by 1 minus sin phi plus sigma 3 n phi or you write it as 2 c cos phi by 1 minus sin phi plus sigma 3 1 plus sin phi by 1 minus sin phi.
phi or thirdly you can write 2 c cos phi by 1 minus sin phi plus sigma phi and uh, pi by 4 plus phi by 2. These are all the same failure criterion according to Mohr Coulomb theory. So it does not matter how you write it is generally considered that either of these two forms are equivalent and you can one or the other. Instead of getting in terms of sigma 1, if you do in terms of sigma 3, you will get sigma 3 f is equal to sigma 1 f 1 minus sin phi by 1 plus sin phi minus 2 c cos phi by 1 plus sin phi. You will get exactly similar expression and here you are now having sigma 1 f instead of tan square pi by what did we write here pi by 4 minus pi by 2 and instead of plus you get 2 c cos phi by 1 plus. So, this is how you get the expressions for failure envelope in terms of tau, sigma 1 f and sigma 3 f. Other important things with respect to the major principal stress, the failure point is at an angle of alpha which is equal to pi by 2 plus pi. So, in real life let us see how the failure plane looks and this is what really happens in practice too. If I now look at a sample, apply sigma 3 and apply vertical stress up to failure, you will see that the soil sample will fail here and with respect to this angle, say this is equal to some beta, beta is equal to pi by 4 minus pi by 2, I am sorry plus pi by 2, which is equal to half of alpha the vertical horizontal plane means on which vertical stress is acting this is the failure plane. The failure occurs along a plane inclined at 5 by 4 plus 5 by 2 which is exactly half of this angle in the Mohr circle. The angle is 5 by 2 plus phi half of that is 5 by 4 plus phi. So, this is what really happens. We are not testing along a failure plane, but you are applying principal stresses, but the failure is occurring on that. So, if you really want to satisfy more column, this is sigma and this is tau and that is satisfied too. So, either you look in terms of shear stresses and normal stresses or principal stresses, you get exactly the same. So, with these concept, we now we have several tests to determine the strength of the soil, the various tests that are available to determine strength of soil and I would like you to remember we are always talking of shear strength. One is called the direct shear test. Sometimes it is called also box shear test. Second is what you call unconfined compression test. Third is called the tri action. Actually, it should have been called axisymmetric test. We call it triaxial for some historical reasons. This, of course, has many variants. Finally, we have what is called as vein shear test. These are the standard routine tests we do in the laboratory. And let's take one after the other to study the same. In the direct shear test, we take two halves of a box 
put one on top of the other. Maybe I should put them together so that there is no gap. The box is open on top and bottom. So, you have and you fill it with soil. Then you put a plate here on top and a ball bearing apply the normal load sigma and the whole thing is contained in a container and then you now apply a force horizontally. We also put a dial gauge at the top and another dial gauge here so that when the box is moving I can get the displacement. So, I am applying a horizontal force or if I divide that by area I get the shear stress and if I divide the vertical force by area you get the normal stress. So, shear box is nothing but two halves you split a box into two parts separate out fill it with soil at whatever density you want and then put them inside the apparatus. Usually you have a, a motor which will push it at a constant rate. So, it is called constant rate of loading. Under a given normal stress when I apply please remember this whole thing is a box. So, the soil will compress and then after the soil is compressed we apply the horizontal force and I take the dial readings as the movement takes place. So, that I can get a graph horizontal displacement shall I call this as horizontal dial gauge against shear stress. So, you will get a series of points and you may get a curve of this kind. You may get a curve of this kind or you may also have delta h versus tau and then you say this will be tau max. This will be the maximum shear stress. So, when you are applying the horizontal force the shear stress increases reaches a maximum value. It may continue at that level or sometimes it will drop down. This different soils have different characteristics. So, what we do is now we repeat the test three or four times. I each time after the test is over remove the soil put it back in the original condition and then apply a different normal stress. So, now I can plot three or four displacement shear stress curves. So, I have here now delta h and tau this is for sigma 1 normal stress, sigma 2, sigma 3. You are applying different normal stresses. This could be as I said 50 kPa, 100 kPa, 150 kPa. You can do 3 or 4 and you will get tau max 1, tau max 2 and tau max 3. So, when you are doing a direct shear test we keep on increasing the stresses. So, that you get higher failure stress in terms of shear. Now, you have 3 normal stresses sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3 and you have 3 maximum shear stresses tau max 1, tau max 2, tau max 3 and you can go to the more plot sigma and tau and you get a straight line and if I fit a straight line I get the intercept here and the angle here called the angle of shearing resistance or friction angle whichever you want to call it and this intercept is called C. In case of coarse grain soils that means sands and gravel C is 0. There is no cohesion. The particles are all separate. There is no bonding between them. So, that is why often we call them as cohesionless soils. Coarse grain soil and cohesionless soil mean the same. This is 
soils with higher grain size, sand and gravel size, they do not have any cohesion, so we call them as cohesion. Whereas, seeds, fine grain soils, that is seeds and clay, they have some cohesion intercept, so they are called cohesive soils. So, you find that when you do a direct shear test, you can have a response. In case of sands, the more envelope or the column envelope passes through the origin. So, if I plot sigma versus tau, this is how coarse grain soil behaves. Whereas, a fine grain soil may have C, but the friction angle will be smaller. So, coarse grain soil, no C and fine grain soil will have certain uh, cohesion and the friction angle will be smaller. The second thing we also do many times is a very interesting phenomenon. We have the dial gauge on the top. Here is the box and you have applied the normal stress, you have a dial gauge and you also have a dial gauge here for the horizontal displacement, shall I call it as vertical displacement. We take the readings of the vertical displacement even when you are applying the shear stress tau and if you plot that now on this plot, let us say I am plotting delta h and I am plotting delta v. We find interestingly, during shear, the vertical dial gauge can move up or down. If it is going down, it means soil is compressing and if it is going up, it is expanding. That means volume is increasing. This is positive volume change and this is negative volume change. Soils have this very interesting characteristic, when you are shearing, the volume change can take place and that is a very important concept. We call it as dilation and we will discuss that later in one of the lectures.